Hey everyone, Finchy Al here, and on today's DIY, we're building a 12 valve VR6 head. Now, we're not gonna build the entire head today on this DIY. We're gonna learn how to just install valves, springs, retainers, and keepers. So, let's get to work because this is Finchy Al's garage. On our live Patreon stream, we actually just did six valves. We did the uh, intake side, well not intake side, but we did the side where the intake manifold sits on and we already done the first six. So I want to show you guys a close up here and I'm just cleaning off the oil so you guys can see, you know, we did the work here. Let's see. So we got all valves done. Now we want to show you guys the bottom of the head because um, it's important that you guys see that as well. And you'll see this beautiful machine shit finished. And this was done by uh, Paradise Motorsports in San Marcos, California. I just want to show you guys a properly machined head. And the reason why you have to properly machine a, um, a head is so when you put your head gasket on, it actually does its job and seal the oil and coolant passages obviously on top of the six cylinders that sit really really tight on this engine on this head and engine block so um, right here uh, each one of these have been grinded down for a proper seat so we call that a, a valve grind a valve seat so where the valves sit down um, you have exhaust and intake so the exhaust will be the larger valve and the intake one will be the smaller one so you can see that all here and we have six valves here in total and then six valves over here so a total of 12 valves so aka the 12 valve VR6 so one thing I want to show you guys is that they die they put a special die on here so when they uh, grind the seat down they don't actually over grind the seat so the valve doesn't sit correctly and that's very very vital to your uh, to your job here so when you take your uh, head over to a machine shop to get serviced, make sure they do a really good, uh, you know, they, they actually do this process to get your new valves, or if you're going to lap your old valves, uh, you're going to lap them so you can get them back on here, that they're grinded, because if not, they're not going to seat properly, and then you're going to have uh, other problems like blow-by going into your, um, into your uh, head here, or going into your, actually, uh, combustion chamber. It depends on how, again, what issues that will arise when certain machine work doesn't get done or doesn't get done properly and this is why I recommend a lot uh, Paradise Motorsports in San Marcos California they do amazing machine work um, and they do it on a really really good price I can't quote any pricing but the prices are very very fair so let's get back to work on this head so this head uh, is being built for Luis Luis Martinez and he hooked it up with brand new valves we are not reusing the old ones, so we got a brand new exhaust and intake valve here. Um, one, two, three, three groove. That way we know this is factory. So exhaust, intake valve, and one, two, three, three grooves. So we know for a fact where we're getting good, good uh, brand new valves. Um, and we didn't cheap out on them. Luis did not, definitely did not cheap out on these valves. Uh, one thing that I always do when I assemble a head is oof, I move this over I always have a piece of wood and a microfiber cloth the wood is just to help me keep pressure going on to here to the uh, the valves the rag is actually for me not to damage the machine surface that's pretty much it so it's up to you and how many valves you want to do at once we're gonna try to put all six in here uh, right off the bat and see if we can get around that Again, no special process in installing valves. 
they just slide right in. Now one thing um, that you're going to need to learn how to do or you're going to need your machine shop to do is the valve guides have to be checked for clearances or their tolerance. If they're not checked or inspected, you have a big possibility of having bad valve guides and then down the road having oil leaks or a blow by going through the valve guides and then car not running correctly or just not burning oil like crazy. So a very, very important uh, step that you guys need to do. Our machine shop checked them out for us. We're still within factory specifications. So... We didn't do them. So what I'm going to do here is kind of get my rag nice and, probably gonna, yeah, there we go, double fold here. We're going to lay this down. I'll try to seat this down as nicely as I can. Now you're gonna, I'm gonna show you something really quick. If I see how the valves are gonna go up and down, and this is why we gotta put the wood on here. So when we get this ready to be tightened down with a, a strap, we'll be able to make sure all valves have full tension on them. So what we want is to prevent the valves going down while we're um, pushing the springs down onto the um, onto the pushing the spring down to put our keepers in. So now that we got the valves all set, uh, we're going to start doing our stem seals. Uh, we have six of these brand new stem seals, part number DC-50 uh, from Euro Tuning is where we ordered everything from. Now, I, this, this build is not sponsored by any big company. This build is actually um, sponsored by Patreon. So not the company Patreon, but Patreon members. Uh, these guys pretty much chip in a couple bucks a month and we can create videos that we're, you know, you're watching right now and then when we're done building this car and then driving it, obviously breaking it in, show you guys the break-in process and you know, taking the car for a drive and whatnot, we're gonna give away the car. Plain and simple. Um, to one lucky Patreon member. So, if you guys are enjoying this video, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe down below. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Uh, that way you guys know when new videos pop up because we get videos as often as we can. Uh, my goal is at least one uh, video a week or up to two videos a week. Uh, it's kind of like what we've been trying to do. It all depends on, you know, situations here at Pinchao's Garage, you know. I do have a normal life and I have a full-time job, so keeps me kind of busy, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm not a YouTube, I'm not YouTube famous, that's for sure. I'm a I'm a normal person. <laughs> Right, so now you're going to watch, we're strapping down the head here, and because of that, you see, I can't push the, the valves down anymore, and that's nice, that's what we're trying to do, is make sure the valves do not go down while we're pushing in the stem seals and actually cranking down the, uh, the springs onto them. So this is what I'm holding here in my hand, is called a stem seal tool. It's a really simple, very, very simple tool. Uh, it comes in two sizes, on one on each side. Um, you grab your stem seal too here, I mean your stem seal, and you'll notice if you look at the, the, the stem seal, um, it's got a tapered side and it's got a flat side. The flat side is what goes down into the actual stem. Now, the stem of the valve. So you'll feel here, this is too big, 
this one is just right. So we're gonna go here. Now you gotta listen for this, okay guys? You're gonna hear watch. One click, two, three, and it slides down. And then you're gonna push down until the stem seal stops moving down. You'll feel it. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna grab a rubber mallet, okay, rubber, and that's it. That's it. You did a stem seal install. Done. All right, so we installed six stem seals now to put in your springs. Now on VR6s, they're kind of a dual spring setup. They have a large spring and a small one. You'll see right here, El Chiquitito, small, and El Grande, big. Small goes inside the big one, and you lay that sucker in there just like that. Nothing special. And repeat the process to all the valves. Now one thing I am going to tell you. They do not have an orientation. I went through the Bentley manual. So if I correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't see an orientation. They do have markers on them for... I believe just for uh, manufacturer assembly purposes, but as per the Bentley manual, there is no orientation for the spring to be placed inside, just to give you guys a heads up. Now we have our keepers, not our keepers, I mean our, our retainers, these guys. They only go in one way. Tapered side down, flat side up. They've been living in oil this entire time since we've been building and building the car, building the um, all the other stuff that we have here at our shop at the oh my mom in my little garage. <laughs> all right, so currently we have all six valves ready for retainers. I mean for keepers to be installed. Um, now the next part of this uh, DIY is the hardest part and as installing the keepers. Now they're nowhere near, if you guys watch my, uh, my build for the uh, 1.8T head, they're nowhere near as difficult as that. So relax now, if you guys can relax, just relax, because now we're gonna do a 12 valve VR head because it's a lot way easier, just, just a ton easier to do this job. Okay, so if you guys a part number, uh, I mean a tool part number, this is super vital to your guys' success in this job. Uh, you need this tool, 91400B. It's called a Universal Overhead Cam, or OHC, Valve Spring Compressor. This tool pretty much will make your life a thousand times easier once you understand how to use it. Alright? We already have it out because we already did six valves, so we're going to do the other six now. Um, now, 12 valve VR6s don't have um, a valve cover uh, bolts down the middle, so you can only use one bolt at a time to uh, pretty much hold your your uh, head bracket and uh, your tool. So, by all means, be creative. 
and don't be dumb and put too much tension in the wrong spot of your bracket so you don't damage anything obviously on your head and on your tool I mean you're gonna spend some money on a tool you might as well you know take care of it now what I'm doing is I'm trying to find my placement where I like it how we did the other valve so I don't put them on super tight because I have to line up these holes on the bracket so the tool goes in smoothly like so uh, on this head you got to do it from the back holes with this tool just like that get your little wrench Now we get our actual compressor tool, or spring compressor tool. Now the tricky part on this is to find the sweet spot for pressing this valve down. Uh, and what I mean is, and we'll get you guys a close look here, when the valve goes down, you want to make sure it goes down straight. Uh, that way both keepers can go in line up and you're done uh, so it's looking like number 11 is going to be my pinhole of choice here maybe looks like it is okay so I'm going to get my little tripod I'm going to do my best to get you guys a very very close look so give me just a minute and I'll be right back Alright, so hopefully you guys can see this. Um, I'm going to move you guys really quick down here as close as I can. And you'll see uh, that's the hole we're talking about. And we're going to compress this, the valve like this, or the spring. And that way um, the keepers can go in. And then you'll look, the further down I go, the more, or not the more, but the better the uh, spring lines up, uh, the retainer lines up towards the middle of the valve. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, so we're going to show you guys, I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, you need a tiny little Phillips screwdriver like this. Okay. Tiny, 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 not very big. Sorry about my dirty hands and my dirty fingernails, but I don't wear gloves when I do my, when I do car work. So I don't like wearing gloves and I never will. You're a man. Thank you, love. I just like my hands dirty, all right? Let's just be honest. So we're going to use the... Um, just like that. So... That's one valve done. I'm going to show you guys. I'm getting up close so you guys can see that. You can see the keepers are in there nice and flush and everything's held down. Super easy, super quick. Tw again, 12 valves are freaking amazing and how much less work there is involved in doing this job. 20 valves, 1.8 T's are just, they just suck. And doing this job because there's so little space and I, I'm just I'm impressed on how little work I gotta do I'm gonna do it again so you guys can see it so I can only do two valves at a time um, because of the way the tool has to go left and right uh, if we separate the tool further out I've had more uh, more problems uh, getting these keepers installed actually so it could be me don't get me wrong it could be me but currently it this works this method works for me so 
If there's a better method, by all means, do it. go so this one you might get lucky you might be do it like this let's see See if the valve will compress where I want it to. If not, we just have to move it. No, it's not going to work. Okay, so no biggie. Let's move our uh, our tool and readjust. All right, so we're up on it. Finally got my settings right. Throw some keepers in here. So, now the keepers are tapered. They have a high side, I mean a top, um, they have a, a tapered side and like kind of a flat side on top. You'll know, you'll see what I mean. Um, and you want the tapered side obviously facing down and the wider side on top. If not, you're never going to get that that keeper in here. Make sure you keep everything oiled. Because if not, putting these in dry are not easy. They don't slide in as nicely. wish I can show you what I'm looking at so you can see how irritating this job is I got one down. There we go. Two. Now we're down to the next two, and then we're down to the last four after this. 
and then I'm gonna see if I get my wife over here to help me do a close-up film. exactly what I'm doing so you guys can see this whole process turn out Alright, that's four. Alright, cool. This will probably be the best valve to show you guys on how to do this. Alright, so we're going to show you guys a close up of the valves. I got my wife holding the camera. So you guys can see exactly how all this looks when it's actually being done. So the two keepers are in there. And then we're going to push down. And you'll see there's a tapered side. and I mean a, a flat side and a tapered side. The small side goes down. The high side goes up. Yeah. I don't need to look at it. And then you gotta just fendangle it all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one valve and keeper. We're gonna repeat the process one more time. Don't let it hit the. Don't let it hit the aluminum. Scratch the lines. Do this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just make care. Be careful. It doesn't hit anything. Okay. do it one more time guys show you guys how to do the keepers all right toss them in there oops not good we're going to compress this Don't move it closer. Don't move it close.
that's it. The second valve, or the last valve, uh, seated. So that's how you install pretty much your valves on your 12 valve VR6. So you guys can see we went all the way across. We did six valves all together. The other six are over here. We already did them. So pretty much right now the head is going to be on sta standby now because now we have a block to finish. The block is next because 12 valve VR6s are really weird. You can't just assemble the entire head and then let it sit and then just slap on build a block. You have to build the block, slap on the head, and then you have to time everything on top of that because they use multiple chains to time itself. Um, so you can't really do much on top of here. I mean, we can set the cams and then put the locking tool, uh, which we will end up doing, but that will be for the next video. But right now, we're going to show you guys step by step all the way through until we're done. So right, we're done right now with assembling, uh, installing your valves, all 12 intake exhaust with springs, retainers, and keepers. Very simple. Thank you everybody for tuning in in this video of Pinchial's Garage. If you like what we do and you want to keep supporting what we do on this channel, please become a Patreon. Click on the description below the link to become a Patreon and pick up some Pinchial's Garage merch. Alright, that being said, have a wonderful day, and as always, here at Pinchow's Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Peace out, everyone.